Hello, my name is Mike. Hey, I'm Kirsty, and we're from Technology Will Save Us. Today we're going to show you how to make DIY Gamer, which is our new kit. You basically build your own console and you get to program your own game. In this video specifically, we're going to show you how to solder all of the parts. We're going to walk you through all of the components. We're going to give you some tips and Kirsty is going to help us, right? Yep, I'll put it together while you walk them through it. We are going to start with the bare PCB, which is the circuit board that basically enables you to plug everything into your Arduino, which is this guy. We're going to solder the buttons, the up, down, left, right buttons. And if you push the PCB into the blue tack, it will hold it nicely in place for you. So with soldering all of these components, um, you basically want a nice little mountain, a nice little hill of solder. You don't want an apple, because if you get an apple, that means that the solder isn't really stuck on the components. While Kirsty is soldering this, it'd be good to explain to you guys how these, these buttons work. They're actually really simple, so um, if you know how switches work, it's, it's basically a broken wire, and when you make a contact and you complete the wire, then electricity can flow through the button. Um, these buttons in particular have tiny, tiny springs in them, which means that you press them and you have a kind of contact, but then when you take your finger off them, they spring back up. Do you like apples, then? Yeah, they are nice, but in a solder context, they're not very nice. Yeah? Well done? Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've done with our buttons. Um, the next thing that we probably want to do is add our LDR which is this guy. Uh, this is a light-dependent resistor. It slows down electricity when electricity flows through it, but the amount uh, that it slows down the electricity depends on how much ambient light there is around this um, LDR. The gamer, you can actually use this as an analog input, so you can kind of put your finger very close or very far away, and you have a different kind of variable input. Or you can use it as a button, just as if you would use a normal button. So, that was easy. Snipping the legs. Yeah, that's very important. So, you'll notice that a lot of the components that you have in your kit, and they uh, have bigger legs than what they should do. So, use your snips to just trim down any components that have bigger legs. Um, you'll notice Kirsty is actually uh, snipping all of the buttons slightly, you know, not too much, but um, this is a good thing to do because when you put the battery uh, clips in later on, uh, your battery will sit in nicely and leveled. Buzzers, very important Kirsty, watch out. Buzzers have a polarity, right, which means that if you put it in the wrong way, it's not going to work. So if you'll notice, it's got a plus sign on one side and a minus on, no, it doesn't have a minus. It doesn't just have a, a minus, plus just a plus, but the legs. Yeah. And you'll also notice that the legs, the plus one, is slightly longer than the, the negative side. So just make sure that you match that up with what you see on the circuit board. Just going to double check. Yeah. It's always good. You'll notice that your, your display has rows of legs. Now, if you were to solder those onto your PCB, um, if you want to change your display, if it burns up, you know, it's kind of a problem. So normally what we do is we plug in our display onto the, into these little sockets. So as you can see now, Kirsty is putting two sockets. Quite easy to solder. Once you get the hang of it, you can actually get pretty quick at doing a, a whole row. There we go. Kirsty's already done. You're much quicker than me. No, no. It upsets me quite a lot. Cool? Yep. Show off your nice work. Yeah? You want to make sure that they're pretty straight. So just kind of push them, make them straight if they're not already. Uh, the next thing we want to do is wire up the uh, sockets for the for our LED driver and our shift register. Yeah. So very important again, chips have a polarity. They have different legs that do different things. So if you plug them in the wrong way, you could actually burn the chip itself. So very important. You'll notice that there's a tiny, tiny, tiny half circle, a tiny. Uh, notch um, that you have to match up with the PCB. So on the on the circuit board, you'll see there's a nice drawing with a notch. So make sure the two notches match. And then the LED driver um, basically allows you to control different LEDs. 
but is also clever enough to make sure that the brightness of all of those LEDs is the same. So make sure, make sure you put the right one in the right socket. You'll notice how on the PCB it says, what does it say? It says TLC5916 on one side yep. and MIC5891 on the other. Yeah, so make sure that both of those chips are plugged in the right socket. Let me show you an easy way to, to plug them in because you'll not see how the, the legs are kind of slightly at an angle. Mm -hmm. If you just put it on the table and just kind of squish it down and lean it forward a bit and do the same thing for all the other legs, then it's a bit easier to put into the socket. Again, make sure that they go up with the right way. So not the notch has to go up. Yep, mm -hmm. all good. Nice. So whilst we're doing that, let's. Um, why don't we do the resistors? Two resistors, one is a 10K resistor and one is a 1K resistor. Um, now, resistors, if you notice them, if you look at them, they have uh, different colors. And every single color is a code for the value of the resistor, and if you kind of add them all up and multiply them, you get the um, you get the value of the resistor. Now, I'm going to help you out, and I'm going to tell you that brown, black, orange, gold is a 10k resistor, so that's 10 kilo ohms. Brown, black, red, gold is a 1k resistor. So make sure you plug the right resistor into the right place. You'll notice that Kirsty is doing a very clever thing. She puts the resistor in and then she bends the legs, the legs slightly once they're into the PCB so that the resistor doesn't fall out when you turn it upside down. What else have we got to do? We've got to do power switch. Power. Let's go for the power switch. You can plug it in both ways, but actually it makes sense for the switch to face up. The next component we're going to go for is our LED, this guy. So uh, an LED is a light emitting diode, and it's basically a very low power light source. Um, this one is particularly cool because it's square. The important thing with, with plugging in an LED is that it has polarity. Again, so it matters which way you plug it in or not. If you, pl if you plug it in the other way, it's not really going to blow up, but it's just not going to work. So you basically have to make sure that, see how on our circuit board, there is one leg which is slightly longer. Just make sure you match up your LED with that leg. Do our multiplayer components. Cool so the gamer uh, actually has the capability of talking to another gamer. So it has an infrared sender and an infrared receiver. Now, your infrared sender comes straight like this, like an LED. It's, it actually is an LED, but it transmits infrared. Um, make sure you give it a 90 degree bend so put it in the, in the circuit board and then bend it 90 degrees and then it should face outwards towards the other gamer. So the next thing is uh, our infrared receiver. Okay, let's do the battery now. If you take your board, turn it the other way around <coughs> and then point the negative side of the battery. Your battery should have two signs. So it should say positive, negative, one side, other side. So make sure the negative side faces the bottom of the board and the positive goes on the top of the board, right? Then take your contacts and just match those up with your battery. And now, now that you have that, you're ready to solder it in. There you go. Thank you. And don't worry too much because the legs don't stick through that much. So as long as you put enough solder on and get a nice joint, you'll be fine. There's one more thing left. Basically, you need these guys, which are called header pins, and they will give a nice good distance between your Arduino and the gamer and it will make sure that everything is connected to the Arduino. So you can either count them and chop them with your snips and then you just chop them. That is a nice way. Or you can snap them as well. It's quite a lot of pins that you need to solder because you're basically plugging everything into the Arduino. So just start from one side and then just finish off from the other. Done. Done. All you've got to do is just take your display, plug it in. Hey, one thing to remember about display, writing on yep. the display, that should be facing the bottom of the board when you pop it in. That's right. It will still work, it will just reverse. So, um, that's us. Ta-da! Ta-da! So now all you've got to do is um, 
take your computer, take a USB cable, plug your gamer in, and see that it all works. Now that you've built your gamer, you need to learn how to use this.